What's the difference between prolapse and incontinence? Incontinence in the urology world usually means any leakage of the bladder that's involuntary. And incontinence can be broken down into several, several different types depending upon the reason that the bladder is leaking. If the bladder is leaking because the pelvic support structures are weak or the urethra is what we call hypermobile, that's called stress incontinence. And commonly, uh, symptoms of stress incontinence are leaking with cough, sneeze, laugh, physical activity, picking up the grandkids, crossfit, jumping rope, anything that's a force or a shift on the pelvis if the uh, pelvic floor is not able to hold in the urethra, the urethra will tip and this causes leakage of urine. The other, the other common cause of urine leakage or incontinence is overactive bladder and the typical quote with this is, I just need more time to get to the bathroom, the urgency is too strong and I can't hold it in. That's actually the bladder muscle being overactive and squeezing when we don't want it to. So typically women will say, I get the urge to pee, running water makes me have an urge to pee and I might leak with that urgency. That urgency is our brain sensing the bladder contraction. So those are the two most common types of incontinence, stress incontinence and overactive bladder or urge incontinence. You're perfectly allowed to have both. Uh, that's called mixed incontinence and about one in three women who come in with bladder leakage or 30% uh, of the population with incontinence will have both types. The reason that it's important to break that down and to be able to tell your doctor what type or what causes the leaking is because our treatments for overactive bladder and our treatments for stress incontinence are very different. The reason that they're different is because the causes are different. One's pelvic floor uh, or your urethral hypermobility issues and then one is the bladder muscle or the bladder nerve causing overactive bladder. In that sense, the uh, sling, which is the traditional surgery, the gold standard surgery, the most common surgery for stress incontinence, that helps stress incontinence, but it will not help overactive bladder. Conversely, the treatments for overactive bladder, such as the medications, oxybutynin, Botox, uh, which is on a botulinum toxin, or interstim, which treats the nerve dysfunction, that will not help with your stress incontinence. So a lot of women will come in saying, hey, I've had a sling, but I, ha I still have lots of urgency, or I have the Botox done somewhere, but I still leak when I cough that's because they likely had mixed incontinence. They had more than one thing going on and understanding the treatments and what they're designed for helps understand why it is uh, helpful to some types of a leakage but will not help other types of leakage. Okay, so we just talked a lot about bladder leakage. Now we're gonna talk about prolapse. Prolapse is different. Prolapse is a descent of any pelvic organ usually into the vaginal space. I call this uh, the female hernia. People understand a lot about men's hernia coming through the abdominal wall. Female hernia is any sort of organ or structure coming down through the vagina. Risk factors for prolapse are age, postmenopausal status, pregnancy, um, being overweight, lifting, straining, constant uh, cough or constipation, all risk factors of increased pressure pushing down into the vagina. So I see a lot of people say, hey, my bladder's dropped. It's not technically accurate that your bladder has dropped. It's more technically accurate to say that that pelvic wall or the vaginal wall is weak and behind that wall is the bladder. Conversely, if it happens in the back, that's the rectocele, or it happens in the top, that's the uterus, or in post-hysterectomy uh, women, that can be other pelvic organs or um, bowel pushing down from the top. So I spend a lot of time drawing little pictures about the three sides of the vagina and saying what side is, is causing the symptoms. The most common side is the anterior side, which is the side that has the bladder on uh, the other side of the vagina. So we, when you say your bladder has dropped, technically it's not the bladder's fault. Okay, so that's prolapse. Can prolapse cause bladder leakage? That is the tricky question for, for urologists. Um, sometimes yes, if your bladder doesn't empty all the way because it can't, it can't kind of pee against gravity to get out of that bulge, you can have some overflow incontinence. Also, um, overactive bladder or um, urgency, you can get more irritative voiding symptoms because your bladder doesn't like being dropped down. It doesn't like uh, sitting down where it is now versus where it was when it was 18 and it had a, had a more direct way into the toilet. 
So you can get relief of overactive bladder symptoms if you have significant prolapse and you treat that prolapse with surgery or a pessary. Pessary is the non-surgery option for uh, pelvic organ prolapse. Also for mild prolapse or mild laxity, both vaginal laser therapy and physical therapy can help to tone and tighten and strengthen the pelvic walls to have less of a, a bulge or, or symptoms of prolapse. The other question I get a lot is a woman comes in with prolapse and we do an exam and we talk about what level of prolapse she has. You don't have to do anything about your prolapse if you don't want to. Just because I see prolapse or a primary care doctor sees a prolapse doesn't mean that there's anything wrong and you don't need surgery or a pessary. Prolapse is very common and a lot of times it doesn't bother a woman. Now in the more advanced stages where it's actually dropped below the level of the vaginal entrance, uh, that's usually when women say it's bothersome, I feel it when I walk, I feel it when I sit, or it feels very heavy. But a common misperception is just because you have uh, prolapse does not mean that you have to do anything about it. It's not inherently dangerous, especially if it's not causing you any symptoms uh, in regards to your toileting. Now some women will have to reduce or splint the prolapse in order to help them urinate or to help them have a bowel movement. Uh, certainly that's a reason that you might want to consider some sort of treatment, whether it's surgical or non-surgical for your prolapse. I always counsel women, again, getting back to what's the difference between prolapse and, and incontinence is just because we fix your prolapse doesn't mean your overactive bladder is automatically going to get better. The bladder might get better because it's going to be happier being lifted up, but you're certainly allowed to have overactive bladder without prolapse. So I always caution women of just because we're fixing prolapse, likely we want it to help those bladder symptoms, but we might need additional treatments if treating the prolapse doesn't help. So I hope this was a, a quick primer on what I do for the majority of my life and career. I see tons of prolapse, tons of overactive bladder. I love seeing happy women when we figure it out and get a treatment that they're satisfied with. So I hope this helps clear it up the difference between incontinence, which to me means unwanted uh, or unplanned bladder leakage, and pelvic organ prolapse. Thank you.